Frank Taylor, man. That was Mark, our Wednesday um, show host. He's a, a ghost expert. And maybe that's why he was very quiet. <laughs> right, we're back tonight. It's Arthur Rafferty's turn again. There's no particular show lineup for Arthur. We come on when we can at least once a week. And um, I booked him in for next Friday, week Friday as well. Um, we'll see over the weekend how it goes. But, yeah, we're, we're talking... Um, as always, this breaking news, um, and we're, we're following the subject at the moment because we're, we're still giving the NHS time to reply um, for the asbestosis uh, problems, and so we'll we'll deal with that a bit more later on in another show because we've got some interesting stuff on that one, and we do keep interesting recordings as well to pop on. But tonight again, it's about our philosophy senior. Newington Street murder, 1974. The IRA claimed they did it. Apparently, it was a mistaken killing. Um, but, you know, what, what concerns me at the moment is, you know, when you try and get a lawyer in Northern Ireland, um, there's three problems. They're either dodgy and they're working for the other side. I mean, it doesn't mean they're dodgy, but they're working for the other side and they won't actually work for you. We know that the judges are dodgy, so that's another problem. Number two is, I didn't know, but you can't actually do a no-win, no-fee um, uh, situation in Northern Ireland. Now, that is bad, because if anybody wrote to you recently at the weekend and said, oh, we're glad to help you, well, unfortunately, no-win, no-fee is you know, very common in Northern Ireland that they can't do it because legislation won't allow them. So if somebody says over the weekend that they can, well, you know, maybe they are a liar after all. But we'll have to hope that there's another way um, some people might want to do it for free. I don't know. So the third problem is jurisdiction. And this, unfortunately, I've looked into this over the last couple of days. That's basically why I've not been ringing you, Arthur. Um, Jurisdiction, it must be only dealt with by only a lawyer in Northern Ireland of any type, shape or form. It can't be dealt with from Southern Ireland, England, Europe. And and the only way to get to the European Courts of Human Rights, the the um the war crimes tribunal properly is to instruct a Northern Ireland solicitor barrister or or advocate from the legal system. So that's dodgy, isn't it, in itself. So we've got problems there but we'll never stop looking for Arthur. Um, and the second point I want to talk about tonight is John Butcher, um, the Operation Kennevo chief, ex Bedfordshire in July. He's planned it very well, actually, because um, he could be leaving one job and starting another one. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, then, Arthur, um, problems with lawyers. That's right, old man. Thank you very much for having me on your show again. Only I've been trying, but it's possible over 20 years to get a solicitor's firm and a legal team to get to to take my father's case on and I've been put from pillar to post not one of them would accept it one or two did accept it and took it for a while and then they got legal aid and then they come back to me and said Arthur we don't think you have a case here after getting legal aid and that's why this the corrupt the solicitors here and the lawyers here, I have no time for them at Ottawa because they are corrupt. And whether they like it or not, I couldn't care less. The system here is wrong. Why not have the whole system? After all, they're calling us part of England, part of Britain. Yet, yet you can pop over over to Britain and get uh, uh, solicitors and, and, and lawyers at, at, at the drop of a hat. But here. I've been put from pillar to post. I've been at the bar council a half a dozen times. I've wrote dozens of letters. They just ignore you. So they do. And I, it's a straightforward case. I can prove my father's murdered by the British government and by the police here and Sinn Féin area. Yet, they have no chance. And as I'm saying, Andy, this Pat Fanu can carry on. I've been down to do it. The modern and the Nugent's office at St. Castle Street. About four years ago, I was just passing by. I was in the town on business, and I, I just walked in. I had a talk with them. I sat down for about an hour, and I spoke to them. 
And then when they ask me the question, oh, it's a terrible death, he says, I, I have you any idea who done it? He says, of course, I know who done it. He says, and the police know who done it. And I have told them that. And it wants to mention, uh, uh, Skipper takes his name. I've seen this, as the expression on his face completely changed. And then he came up straight away and said, like, well, we'll not be able to take that case on. I said, why? Is it too big for you or what? He says, no, because we do all of Sinn Féin Airways work. I says, oh, because I'm a member of the public here, I'm coming in to see you people. Is my money not as good as the money Sinn Féin Airways paid you? So he wouldn't answer that. So I had to just walk out. But now today, I hear that this fellow... And another thing, uh, I hear this fellow, of John, John Tanugan, he's a solicitor himself now. He stood there, I think it was last week, and he won a seat as an MLA for Sinn Féin ARA on the council. And today, that's, that's her, 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 her quickest opening. He's been asked to be the new Lord Mayor here. My God, I, I, I can't understand it at all. Because, after all, I asked his firm to take my father's case on, but no, he wouldn't even do it. He wouldn't take it on. Yeah, Alpha, well, let me um, come in here. You you think, um, and maybe I think also, because I don't see any other explanation, but the problems you have had um, in Northern Ireland is basically your, vigil- your religious beliefs, really, um, that's the way I look at it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think you're part of your your religious beliefs or your part of where you live in Belfast has been ridiculed because of where you live or what religious beliefs you are. Um, you know, you go into a lawyer's office and, okay, you, you're not this, so you have to go to one of them lawyers that is one of them, you know. and I mean, it's ridiculous. It used to be. Every lawyer dealt with every person, you know, irrespective of age, colour, disability or religious belief. Um, But I must admit, you know, the Northern Ireland conflict and the aftermath has really amazed me um, because I always believe in good people and I believe that there's always someone out there willing to help. Um, Sadly, you know, (laughs) it may be one of these cases on this level anyway, not the NHS. I think that's easy to crack still. Um, I'm giving them time. But I think on, on your dad's murder, we just need a bit of hope and a bit of luck. One thing I did hear from this group that we was mentioning earlier on today, um, it's a Facebook group, and I hope they're listening. They said, Adams and Co., in brackets, McGuinness, knows everybody who was shot murdered the reason why who did it the date it was done because they keep diaries and they've still got the diaries even up till today um there you go i didn't even know that that was just a general comment in one of these facebook groups well yes Andy. of course anybody who lives here in belfast and has been treated the way i've been treated i know everything about these people Adams and mcginnis and Kelly, the whole other, they have, because uh, when a person is told to do a job, it comes right from the very top. They know everything about it. Yet these people are able to walk about the town, be on television day and night, tell their stories, speak to people. Yet a person like me, when I go into the BBC to speak about my father, they tell me, oh, you'll, yes, we'll take you in, but there's a big but there. You have to just answer the questions that we ask you. So uh, the whole system here, Andy, is corrupt. There's no doubt about that. And this Pat, this uh, Pat for me can carry on. That's what annoys me. Now his father, God have mercy on the man. I've never met him, uh, but uh, every time he asked for an inquest, or he was granted it time and time again, both here and America and London. I've asked for an inquest for my father for over 20 years here. And they, they, have, they keep refusing me. The Attorney General here, the past two Attorney Generals were Barry McCrory. I asked him. I wrote letters and phone calls, you name it. No. Wouldn't give it. 
but, but, but there again, when you look at it, look, well, when you look at the papers here, Barry McCrory is involved with Sinn Féin anyway. He's up to his eyes on it. And his father, as solicitor before him, he was up to his eyes on it too. Then the next one was Jim Larkin. He was the Attorney General. And I, I, I done the same with him. I asked him for my father has to get an inquest. He, there was no inquest ever done on my father. He waited months and months and months, and then came back to me, and they, uh, he said to me, Mr. Rafferty, you have made in one of your statements here that you spoke to a special Blanchman. I said to him on the phone, I said, yeah, and what's the problem with that? The special Blanchman was a man who was in the hospital with my father, and I spoke to him many a times when I was up there. Oh, you couldn't tell me the name of that man, could you? I said, for why? What do you want to know his name for? He's a member of the forces here, security forces. Oh, he says, well, uh, apparently he wanted to speak to him about me. So therefore, he wouldn't tell me anything about my father's because he was more interested in who I was speaking to, the special branch man. He said, well, no, I won't tell you his name, but what's to stop you? I know you're, you're up to your eyes in Sinn Féin area, and he didn't like that. I says, if I give you this man's name, I'd be putting this man in great danger. So no, I'll not tell you his name. Well, he didn't, don't they? <clears throat> you know, but what annoys me, the Van Nugent family can ask for an inquest at the drop of a hat, and they get it. The British government gets it. But maybe it's because that's payback time, you see, for what the British government done to my father, along with the RUC, PSNI, and of course, with the backings of Sinn Féin RA. And anything they ask, or anybody belonging to Sinn Féin asks for anything here, they get it. No problems. Yet when I ask for it, it's blocked. <clears throat> yeah, it's not just you, obviously. I mean, I'm pretty certain they haven't got, you know, on their wall or, or their um, computers, block Alpha Rafferty, block David, our friend from Belfast, <laughs> block Andy Peach. You know, I'm sure it's, you know, it, it's sod the public, sod the normal people. Um, we're the big people. We care about ourselves. We don't care about nobody else. That may be the attitude. Um, but I'll also go far now. I didn't think it was possible. Um, but I realise now there is a lot of religious and a lot of hatred between the Irish, the British, the Northern Irish, and, and so on, you know. So either, I'll even go now to say if you're Catholic or Protestant, Protestant, uh, you know what I mean, um, yeah, or or any other religion that, that's got a problem in Northern Ireland. I actually think that you know they do slag each other off openly in public. Well, Andy, I've had trouble with the law here. The police never, I've never been in court in my life for anything illegal. Yet, police here have hacked into my phone. Have got in contact with my insurance company in England, have stopped my insurance, and me driving about here in the town all the time, I'm in the town every day of the week, police were able to stop me on the fall of the road, Mr. Rafferty, I never met him before, I said, yes, speaking, he says, uh, you know you're driving this car and it has no insurance. I said, well, that will be news to me because I have two cars, and the two cars are fully insured by a firm in England called Saga. S A G R. So he he was he was talking on the phone to somebody, and all of a sudden he gave me a ticket. And when I back to, I, I went back into my office and I phoned Saga and I said, "Yes, Mr. Rafferty, you're you th- someone phoned in and stopped your insurance." I said, oh, "How long ago? About six weeks ago." I didn't even know that. Now. Uh, I with it, I with it, but of course the PPS office have no love for me. After all, I'm standing up for my father's murder, and I've had words with them time and time again. All of a sudden, a letter comes through the post. I have to attend court. The police were taking me to court. I didn't attend the court, of course, but I got how to get the trouble to get a solicitor, which I did. I hit near these people, but uh, I lost my license. They took six points of my license, no fine. Now, I was speaking to other people, and other people says, yes, they can take some points of your license, but they also fine you. So I'm, they wondered why I was never fined. Nor it was never in the paper. 
No, but as, as, as I'm saying, aren't they? That's not the first time. A couple of months back there, a judge in the, in the high courts here, uh, along with two police women, and along with the PPS off, always as usual, and a, a, a girl who works in the courts. They they hacked into my site, my private site here, with all my stories on it, about all my victims, and took out stories, and made a case against me to trail me through the courts again. And I, I had a appear in court again. Me, never been in trouble in my bloody life. But I appeared in court, the judge didn't even look to me, didn't even speak to me. And the person I had supposed to be a barrister was just up sitting, practically holding hands with the judge. Talking to them. The two of them was talking to me together. After that, he says, he can, he can walk up to me, Sir Arthur, that's the case over. I said, what's the case over? I, I, I want to put my case to this, uh, this uh, judge to tell her what happened there. One of her friends, a, a judge, a corrupt judge. So he said, no, it's over, Arthur. So he, he was, that's all he told me. I, I went home then, about oh, maybe a week later, the, the thing came to the door to tell me that I was fined £500. And if, if that wasn't a weight voice, I don't know. And I wrote a letter to the Lord Chief Justice and the Chief Constable, expressing my uh, my total abhorrence against them. But what can you do, Andy? This must be the most corrupt country in the world. And I have no doubt about saying that. And for me to get a solicitor, two or three of my cars have been damaged by vandals. I must be the only man in Northern Ireland that can't phone the police for help because they won't come anywhere near me. And this is because I'm taking a case against them for murdering my father. They think I'm like the rest of the people here, sit down and accept it. I don't do that. My father comes first. And I'm fighting his case now only 44 years. And now I find lawyers and all now, are members of, of Sinn Féin ARA, and now they're going to be Lord Murs, and they get everything they ask for, Yet if I ask for anything at all, one one little inquest I'm asking for on my father, and they have refused it, and I want to know why. Well, you know we're going to get to the bottom of this one way or the other, and even if it just means pissing people off and making them drown in paperwork, uh, you know we can throw paper at them because that's basically what our country is all about. It's about paperwork. Um, you know, everything is based on a form. Everything is based on, you know, filling in a big form even or a letter to apply for this. Now, I never understood what the problem was when I was younger, but now I do. Um, it's all about milking the system and milking the taxpayer for more money because if you put in forms, they have to store them somewhere. And that storage costs money and so on and so on. You know, um, what people are now doing more recently in the last, I don't know, five, ten years, you can actually photograph documents now and send them by email. So, you know, they don't need to store them in, in bulk. But anyway, that that was just that. Um, regarding your court cases, I um, somebody that I know, um, they got fined for... Uh, what did they get fined for now? Um, it was a parking ticket, I think. No, not a parking ticket, because it had to be in the magistrates. No, it was probably speeding, then, as an example. Let's say they were speeding. Um, but when they got to court, um, they said, look, I have a right to talk. Regarding speeding, okay, then, um, I can't prove it, but I never did it, he said. And then he said, but while you're here, the corrupt policeman who raped my wife actually um, caught me speeding. <laughs> so the, the point I'm making here is that you go to court for one reason and somehow you twist it into another reason. And, of course, the judge is going to say, we're here to talk about this. No, but, Your Honour, this is a part of, um, and they're not really that, that fancy, really, that you shouldn't call them, Your Honour, but you do that to, to shut them up. Um, but, you know, this guy 
policeman who's intimidating this man who was speeding. And he may have been speeding or he may not have been speeding. The point was the guy got out and caught about the policeman who raped his wife. Um, and, and it's a true story. And in the end, in that courtroom, the speeding ticket man, it was just gone. And the, the investigations of the copper who was trying to get him for speeding, it, it was all on him. It don't always work that way, but, you know, um, use the courtroom to your advantage sometimes. Um, it doesn't work for everyone, like I said. Okay, let's... G- oh, one last thing before we do get on with um, other matters. Um, Kieran Conway also is a um, a lawyer in Bel- uh, sorry, in Dublin. We did contact him, and I contacted him the last time apologising for... Um, you know, the misunderstandings. Uh, you know, Arthur Rafferty wants a lawyer within the jurisdiction, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he never got back. Of course, Kim Conway is, again, an IRA um, top man. Um, he thinks being a book author and a barrister is going to, you know, get people to forgive him or forget. People don't, especially the grassroots people of Northern Ireland, the real people that, that got hurt. Um, it's embedded in their brains what happened to them. So I just wanted to say, you know, he's another lawyer that I'm not saying he's a bad lawyer. Cause I don't know the guy, but why would you um, give up being a terrorist in a way <laughs> to being a lawyer for the other side as well as your side? Anyway, that's very strange. Um, moving on to John Bolcher, yeah, I wrote um, something. In IRA murders stroke NHS medical dot co dot UK. Just Google that as IRA murders dot NHS medical dot co dot UK or just simply NHS medical dot co dot UK and look for the section IRA murders. And interestingly, it's about Chief Constable Bolcher, Bedfordshire Police. He's applied for the job for the Police Service of Northern Ireland and and the, the first bit um, I put as a poster, it says, something is not right here, I smell a rat. Um, th- then I went on urgent message to the chief constable, that was Alpha Rafferty's re- recent video, and, and I've commented here, editor's comments, two people up for the new chief of Northern Ireland's controversial police force, the old RUC, the, the Royal Alfred Constabulary, now PSNI Police Service Northern Ireland. If we're trying to protect and be fair to both sides of the Irish argument, the religious problems in Ireland, Northern Ireland. I always say both because I respect both sides um, of the argument. Then the police force title needs to be changed because at the moment it's basically saying police service of Northern Ireland means we're Northern Ireland, we're British, fuck you. Pardon my language. What it should say is something very similar but maybe the police service of Great Britain and Northern Ireland or whatever, Great Britain yeah, and Irish people, I don't know um, the name. Um, my point is um, here that um, this new chief constable of Northern Ireland, Belfast area, you're either going to be voting for a bully, um, which is the other guy, I'll come on to him in a minute, or you're going to be voting for Belcher. You know, I, I don't mean we'll get a say anyway, because uh, Sinn Féin, by the way, and other people in the wrong side of this argument, is actually making sure that the police service pick the right candidate. There is two more candidates involved in the argument, um, but they're not likely to be anywhere near Belcher and this other guy. So the Chief Constable Belcher who leads Operation Kenevo. Mm. Well, I, I think that definitely there's a rat there, and the definition of smelling the rat is to suspect that someone is guilty of betrayal, deception, or causing a situation to go wrong. So he took over Operation Kenevo. He decided, as a chief constable of Bedfordshire, I'm going to make a name for myself, and i make the people of Northern Ireland proud of me. Mm. Do you smell that rat now? Um, because he's now going to apply for the job. He's nearly the top man to get it. And and also, it's a conflict of interest, surely. You can't work as an independent 
um, committee man to try in an inquiry to try and solve the problem in Northern Ireland when you actually want to be their chief constable. You know, that is definitely smelling of that. Even I'm not as thick as monkeys to realise that. And that's why I wrote this piece. Also, I have said today, you know, about the the, the conflict of interest. Um, I said, hopefully Mr. Bolcher will resign from the inquiry or explain why he, he can still carry on. I mean, we, we do get a lot of inquiries about this um, sort of situation in the past. And I said to him, if you have a heart, I didn't put that, but I'm going to have to add that. I'm going to say, if you have, have a heart, will you explain to Arthur Rafferty Jr. why Arthur Rafferty Sr. was murdered? And you can't, you know, in in that day and age, and his son's now 79, he'll be dead one day. He's already got asbestosis. So I, I'm going to put it into a way. Anyway, the other guy, I mean, this is even more comical than, than John Bolcher. Simon By- Byron, he's ex-Cheshire police. I know somebody who um, he proved it and then he, that he got jailed for um, calling the chief constable in Cheshire, Simon Byron, um, that he was bullying staff um, and bullying parents and bullying people on investigations. This guy got jailed anyway, that don't matter. Um, so that's what he is. He, he actually got um, an inquiry into him for bullying a female officer because from reports he doesn't like um, females because he, he just seems to hate them. So I put here, the old boys club cleared him of bullying again, a female officer. I'm sure the pianist and I must have female officers that don't want to be bullied. Um, so, so, you know, all this stuff that's going on, I mean... I know. I don't think George Hamilton was any better, though. Um, you know, obviously, you know about George Hamilton, Arthur, more than yeah. I do. Well, yeah. I'll from I, I was, I, I was to meet this fellow, George Hamilton, dozens of times, and he has, he, he, has, he won't even answer my bloody letters, and then this fellow, butcher, I met him five to six times. And he has no interest in sorting my father's case out at all. And the last time I met him, I told him that, and he didn't. He didn't take it too well. But that's like to me, it's a pinch of salt to me. I couldn't care about these people, but they know now. The main's made up now that they're not going to do anything about my father. As you say there, you seen there just a, a minute ago. The legal system here, you have to supply yourself with one of these corrupt lawyers or corrupt solicitors firms here to fight your case and you're going to go up against these corrupt judges so I think it's only a waste of my time trying to bring my father's case to court here it would be a waste of like, what they want to do with me uh, on the, is to make me pay my own fur, my own, my own figure in my own pocket and why should I against these corrupt judges who have no interest in my case at all because after all, they're working for the British government, they get paid by the British government, and they're not going to do anything for me to offend them people. The same with the police. I can't get any of it all. No matter what happens to me and in my firm at all, my office is broken into a couple of times, a couple of my cars, windows smashed. I have to just accept it, have it fixed, and that's it. Because I can't phone these people at all. And they told me the BBC... Every time I phone the BBC on the, to have a, a, a to put in an, an, a, a protest in or anything like that, they know my number and all. They have my number and all there. And half of the times it rings and rings and rings. They never answer. It. So yeah, I've been way. I've been trying yeah. just on that matter. And sorry to interrupt. On that point, I've been twittering some of the BBC journalists in Northern Ireland and. One of them did reply a female, and I said, sorry to hear about that other lassie that, that got shot dead in Derry. Um, she said, yeah, she's a friend of mine. That's how I started the conversation going. Then I said, um, I know somebody that's, um, you know, got this problem, and we can't seem to get any media coverage. Um, she said, who who is it? And I sent her the link. She said, yeah, she said, don't take it personally um, 
but we're not allowed to really go into anybody's personal stories at all. And, and I do know that's kind of similar over here, but how the hell will you ever get justice if they don't do a few of these personal stories? And and I and the thing she said was, she said what you need is to kick them up the backside, basically, um, and that's the British and Irish media, because it's probably both both the same, really. You need to get an outside media outlet, like in Europe or somewhere in the world, to do your story on mainline radio or TV, and then they'll have to report it. That's the only way they're going to... So anyway, so I said to her, is it like a DNR notice, do not report? She said, it probably looks that way to the public. Um, but it's more, we don't want to upset the majority of people who don't understand this stuff. Um, why? Because they won't listen to the telly, they won't put the radio on, they won't buy the newspaper. So we just have to not publish individual stories. Now, I mentioned Operation Kenova to her, and I said, do you, do you ever think Stank Neff will ever go to jail? She said, no comment, but um, you know the truth already without me telling you. And I said, how do you know that? Because she said you wouldn't have asked otherwise. <laughs> so that was a good last year, really. Yeah, so she's confirmed without... Because she knows it, I could copy it and post it around. She's only been very, very careful, but at the end of the day, she's telling absolute God's honest truth. But that ain't going to help us, Arthur. Well, We've got to fight. Well, We've got to fight. Oh, well, sure. you know me. I'm a fighter. I've been fighting all my life. But I've had 250 fights as a fight. Believe you me, and one thing I can do, I can fight. But this fella, Boucher, he spoke to me, as I'm saying to you, and I could tell by his tone he was no more interested than me than the man in the moon. The moon because he's a British man himself. He's working for the British government. He's sent over here to do a job. And believe you me, his job is done now. He has this top job now coming on. And if he be uh, the chief constable here, that's my father's case, and a no no land again. And the only, the only way I can get justice for my father here, that's hard to say. But I was born and reared here, but this town here is not going to do me any favours. I'm going to have to take it to the European Court of Human Rights. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've always said to you there's a pathway to go to European courts and the War tri Trials um, Commission. I wouldn't rule out a bit of luck, you know, on that department. You're supposed to go this way, that way, and the other way. But when your MPs, uh, sorry, members of the Northern Ireland Executive are a little bit dodgy or corrupt or biased, when the police are corrupt, dodgy, or biased, when the judges are corrupt, dodgy or biased, there has to be somebody else in the world that can help you. And I'm pretty certain that if we had a good European MP, um, a, a Europe, member of the European Parliament, not for Northern Ireland as such, but a different one that could liaise with one of the good ones in Northern Ireland, they may be able to help you with. Um, and, and, and that's my next plan on this one, because you've convinced me after three weeks that, you're not going to get anywhere in Northern Ireland. I just thought, you know, the other things I've been dealing with have been pretty easy compared to this one. Um, I still say um, on air, you have asbestos is a problem and bringing Belfast Trust to account isn't that hard. It may take, you know, I'm going away for a month as well, but it may take the end of the year before you get proper answers on that one. But I, I'm pretty certain from what we've done already, and I've not done it as much as I said at the moment, because I wanted to give them the time. They've had the time now, Arthur. Um, and if we don't hear from that person who said she was going to get back to us, um, the, the other one, you know, um, up, up in the Northern Trust, she hasn't had a lot of time to investigate that particular consultant. But the first call... She's had more than enough. She's had two weeks now. I've emailed her and nothing. 
Uh, well, don't well, I'll give leave. up hope, my man, because you know we're going to party when you get some um, answers. Well, Andy, I don't expect them people to come back to me at all because they know I have a good case here and they know that everything I'm saying is 100% truthful. I, and uh, these people know what they did. And they've not only done it to me, but how many hundreds of other people have they done it to? And they're not going to open up a hole there that the whole lot of me is going to fall in it. Because these doctors, you know yourself, they are corrupt. Well, I know enemy for a fact. What they done to me was totally wrong, and that should never, never have happened. Not their doctor. You're supposed to have some respect for a doctor, but these people, especially her in them, and on the Mary Hospital, to call her a doctor is an insult to to, to, uh, to the old pair of doctors. But she done it totally wrong, totally wrong to me. And all they have to do is, as you said before, Andy, come to me and say, Arthur, we made a mistake. And the police too, the same with the police. And they came and owned up that they made a mistake to my father and they've apologized. I will accept that because there's nothing more I can do. But I see now I'm not going to get his case to court here. I'm not going to get my case to court here. It's a lost cause, Andy, unless we take it across the water. I know you've... you've uh, Done your best, Sunday, and the worst part about it is, all my stories, all these years, I, I I have been putting them into the papers, and the papers were fighting to get my stories off me. Now it's all changed. They have been censored by MI5 and this corrupt police force here, and they put nothing in the paper for you at all. The same with BBC, British Broadcasting Company. Their name suits them. They not hurt the British government. And not do anything for me at all, Andy. And yeah, reading an article in 2018, uh, Christmas time, John Boach, an English police chief who's demanding access to information from top secret MI5 files to assist his inquiry into the acti- activities of the Army's highest place in former state knives, um, doesn't readily take no, no for an answer, but. Yeah, at that point, you know, at Christmas just gone by, if he got his answers from MI5 files, you know, he would be doing what he said on the tin regarding the inquiry. But after that, you know, he's probably thought, they're not going to give me the um, files. I can't make a name for myself anymore. I'll just get the chief's job instead. I don't know. But his he's, um, comment there, though, at Christmas, I'm not going to readily take no for an answer when he goes to the MI5 for files. <clears throat> Why have they not been published? Exactly, exactly, Andy. And as I'm saying, I had many a talk with him now at, at the meetings. And he kept he kept saying to me, like, I'm, I'm my own man. I'm not told what to do by the British government. Well, he's, he's talking to Arthur, Arthur Joseph Rafferty, and I know him. I could read his mind right away. He was sent here for a purpose, and this purpose is coming off very soon. That's why he, 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 he put his name forward. This is a better job for him. And then Schiappatici will have no problem with him, because after all, he has, he, he has the word of the police and the British government that nothing, nothing will ever happen to him. So my father's case will have to be heard outside this country. And as long as I live on there, and I hope I live for a great many years yet, I've been taking his case to the, 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 the courts in Europe because I get no satisfaction here. And I know of myself now. I only waste my time here. And I apologize to you for that, Andy, because you're doing a good job there. But no, well, you, it you, sounds you're like... You're fighting people that are corrupt. It sounds like you're saying goodbye. We're not going to give up on this one. No. It's just we need to go abroad, I think, and <laughs> me, media and support. There's a lot of human rights organisations out there. Just but you only, I've, been, I, I've been to human rights most of 50, 60 times. No, in, meetings, in Europe. The commissioner, and they've done nothing for me. We're talking in Europe. 
yes. We need we need to. Anyway, listen. I've just come up with some stats. There's 50 police working detectives working on this inquiry. Now they only started in just as a guess, January 2017. Now yes. 50 police um, and their salary because they're detectives. Uh, and we're not even adding on the tea and the coffee, the lights, the, the, the car expenses, the paying people to talk. Just yeah. their salaries alone cost the taxpayer 37 million a year just for that inquiry. Now, if you divided that 37 million pounds, forget the second year, put that back into the public purse. So all the victims, that 37 million, I divided it um, on the basis of, let's say there's 800 of them. You would, you would all be, you know, very rich and, and very happy. It's not about the money, of course. It's about the justice. But, you know, there's something wrong there, you know, spending all that money on an inquiry that's going nowhere. And, Andy, as well as that, you just have to look at the politicians here, the so-called people that call themselves politicians here. They won't even sit down in the same room as to, and talk to each other now. And they're on strike now for this past two and a half years. And it's cost the British, British government £11 million. Pounds. And these people are walking about as if they're doing no harm. That's fraud in anybody's book. And this police force here is standing by and let it happen. And that's what annoys me. I'm looking for an inquest for my poor father, and they turn it down. These people are breaking the law, left, right and centre, claiming money for everything, and getting it. Then you get the Papanigan family there. They've got everything they want because it's payback time by the British government to pay Sinn Féin for what they've done to my poor father. And I have no doubts about that whatsoever, Andy. And what I would say to these people, I hope they're listening to me tonight, put them all together. And they wouldn't make a putz for my false treasures. That's the way I feel, aren't I? And another stat here, I mean, maybe my 37 million wasn't right. It may have been three, no, it couldn't have been 370. It may have been 3,700,000, actually, um, in a year, because the bloody Sunday inquiry um, cost from 1998 to 2010, that's 12 years, um, it cost 192 million. And do you know what? This is where the corruption and the sadness comes in. Nearly 100 of that million was spent on legal representations. 92 million on police and, and the chair. So what a waste. What a waste. Anyway, we're coming up to the end of the show, Arthur. And uh, we've got about one, yeah, one minute just. Just say what you've got to say, one minute. Johnny, I'd like to say, those people now, I'm sick to listen to them on the television, on the radio, they've got plenty of time to speak. Those people that were abused, God help them if they were. But I, I believe half of them are only hopping on the bandwagon. But they're getting plenty of coverage from the BBC. Yet when any time I go near the BBC, they must think I'm a leper. They, turn, they just pull the plug. And I'd like to know the reason why...